uh, SME development team in the Connected Spaces Catapult. Um, and for this programme in particular, um, I'm honoured to have been asked to, to work for Highways England, uh, leading on the delivery of their graffiti innovation funding programme. Um, just to advise you that um, this webinar is being recorded. So for our colleagues who can't be with us today, um, the link to it will be available um, straight after the event. So why are we here today? Um, this competition, uh, the first of its kind, um, is offering grants of up to £30,000 for six, up to six organisations. Um, commercial businesses and universities to design a new trial of innovative technology that has the potential to either remove or prevent graffiti on the strategic road network. Today um, is all about guiding you, our potential programme applicants, um, in how to scope uh, and complete your application for this funding. Um, Nick, if you wouldn't mind bringing up the agenda for today, please. Thank you very much. So I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Annette Pass, um, who is Head of Innovation for Highways England, and also Joe Lewington, Chief Environment and Sustainability Officer for Network Rail. Um, in a moment, and Annette and Joe will be taking us uh, through sort of why the challenge of graffiti is so important um, to them and within their organisations. Um, then um, I'll be taking you through some key points um, in the application process before handing over to a colleague of mine, Abraham. Um, Abraham's one of the Catapult's technical uh, experts um, and he will be talking you through the programme's scope and what exactly Annette and her team are looking to fund. Um, so for this competition, um, particularly, as you probably will expect, regulation and certification are critical elements um, of, of the, of the programme of, of, of each individual project. So we have um, Armour on hand uh, from Highways England to talk you through um, HE requirements and how you can expect to work with them. Um, for this programme, uh, we're also delighted to be working with Kia um, and we have a presentation by their head of innovation, Tom Tidewell, as well. Um, and then at the very end of the presentation, there will be a Q&A session. If you do have any questions on anything throughout any of the presentations that you hear today, please go ahead and use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Um, we will aim to answer as many questions as we possibly can after the event today, but if we don't quite get around to all of them, um, we will make sure we record them and then get back to you afterwards with uh, some further details. So without further ado, um, I'd like to hand over to Annette, um, who will give you a very brief introduction to the graffiti competition. Thanks, Annette. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, I'm really delighted to be here this afternoon. It's actually the culmination of um, quite a number of months work uh, to get here. And I'm really delighted to welcome everybody who has dialed in with an interest in potentially being involved in our competition. Um, if you can go to the next slide. Yeah, thank you. Um, so what I'll do in just the next few minutes is give you a little overview of the Highways England network and just very broadly why we chose to focus on graffiti as a challenge and why that's so important to us. Um, my role is in Head of Innovation, so I look after the process by which we bring in um, and bring on new ideas and, and help develop those ideas into practice. Um, so there's some facts and figures here about our network. So Highways England's network, we operate in England, as the name suggests, and we look after what we call the strategic road network, which is um, the motorways in England and major A roads as well. These roads only constitute around 4% of all roads uh, in the country. However, they carry 34% of all traffic um, and indeed around two thirds of all freight as well. So they are absolutely critical, not only to connecting people and places, um, but to the economy and moving freight and goods around the network. 
safety is one of our huge um, in, uh, priorities and imperatives and we're pleased that we have reduced the number of casualties on the road by um, 18 percent over the last five or six years uh, but we certainly do not rest on our laurels and safety is and remains our top priority and, and that kind of runs through um, the heart of the graffiti competition as well if you move to the next slide please so what do we do at Highways England? Well, um, the majority of, of what we do is, is building, um, constructing, maintaining and operating the strategic road network, which you can see schematically on the, uh, the map there. As you can see, um, that constitutes a lot of things, a lot of assets. Um, so 150,000 signs, there's over 20,000 bridges and structures, for example, and 10,000 miles of carriageway. Um, so, so that's quite a responsibility to keep that all in safe working order and to look after it with good value for money um, without disrupting that vital flow of traffic. But although this slide shows a lot of things, it's really the people that we're concerned with and that's at the heart of our, our philosophy. It's the people using the network, the drivers, um, passengers people and people who rely on our network, people who live near our network as well, um, and um, others who are affected by it. And really kind of that underpins um, the nature of the graffiti challenge and, and really why we're doing what we're doing today. Next slide, please. So, as I said, people, uh, our customers are most important to us and graffiti on and around the network is very unpopular with our customers. Um, they don't like it, it's unsightly. Um, those people who use the network every day, perhaps freight drivers or commuters in particular, um, don't like to see a messy network, they don't like litter, they don't like graffiti. It's not all offensive, occasionally some of it's quite amusing, um, but as I said, safety is our main imperative and, you know, really um, say graffiti is unsafe for both the people who are perpetrating it, uh, you know, who, who are sometimes risking their lives, um, whether to put graffiti onto bridges or, or close to the network. And indeed, for people using the network, if, if for example, people were to drop a spray can off, off the side of a bridge and it would be hitting a moving vehicle underneath. So there's some very important reasons why um, we don't like graffiti on the network. It's also um, an expensive and difficult job to remove as well and um, potentially disruptive and unsafe for our contractors. And um, the fact that we quite often have to close lanes in order to deal with graffiti safely means that that has an impact on the traveling public as well, which again, we don't like. Transport ministers have actually, um, this is something that they care about as well and have given their advocacy to this approach to really sort of trying to leave no stone unturned and finding ways to which, with which to prevent and, and tackle graffiti. So what we're here to do today is we, we've put up some money from our innovation and modernization designated funds. That designated fund is there in order to give us um, some capacity to develop those new ideas and new solutions uh, to help the network improve uh, over, over our roads period. And so what we're really trying to do, really welcoming, um, is you bringing us your exciting new um, and innovative ideas uh, on how to tackle this problem and, and as working with you um, to try to develop those into potential trials that we, we can take forward. So I'll hand back to Rebecca now. Thank you, Rebecca. Brilliant, thank you so much, Annette. Um, jo. Hi there, thanks, Annette, thanks, Rebecca. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you um, to Annette and the team at Highways England. Whilst Network Rail is not directly involved in this, um, we have been working really closely with Highways England recently on this graffiti challenge. Um, and we share a lot of similarities with the, uh, with the road network. So by way of introduction, um, my name is Jo Lewington. I'm the Chief Environment and Sustainability Officer at Network Rail. Um, I work within our technical authority team. Nick, can I have the next slide, please? Um, and our vision is to serve the nation with the cleanest, greenest transport. We want 
to put passengers first and we want to help passengers make green choices and we want to support local communities and to be a good neighbour. Um, my team is responsible for delivering our recently published environmental sustainability strategy, which is around achieving net zero, but it is also around making sure that we, um, we act as a responsible landowner. And graffiti is a massive blight on our estate. It's something that we are constantly tackling. Next slide, please, Nick. So our estate is, is vast, um, similar to highways. Um, you know, we, we have a 50,000 hectare estate within the rail corridor and the bits of the land that we own around it. Um, it's split into five regions and 14 routes. And as I said, has very similar challenges to Highways England. So I see this as a great opportunity for further collaborative working. Uh, we've created a graffiti task force, which we um, we are targeting, very much targeting hotspots with a graffiti blitz. Um, but we're also, as I said, working closely with Annette and her team on looking at opportunities where we could maybe benefit from innovations to tackle this challenge going forward. And I think key to that really is thinking creatively. So this is a challenge that we're not going to tackle overnight, uh, but I see this as a really great step forward for us. Next slide, please, Nick. And this just gives us, uh, this is just a slide on our environmental sustainability strategy. Um, and as I say, graffiti, whilst it isn't a direct um, impact, it does create the wrong uh, image for the railway. And as Annette said, creates safety issues as well. Next slide, please, Nick. So why does this matter? I mean, Annette's covered some of this, but uh, in the pictures here, you'll see Chris Heaton Harris and Grant Shapps, Rail Minister and um, Secretary of State. And so there is a lot of political pressure at the moment to make sure that we welcome passengers back onto the rail network. And graffiti, frankly, is something that they don't like to see. It gives the impression that uh, the estate is unloved um, and not looked after. Um, also this year, you know, we're hosting COP26, um, the climate change conference. So actually it's really important that as you know, we are seen to be looking after our estate. Um, and then the middle section here, we're just about making sure that we're leveling up and building back greener. As again, graffiti is all about how, um, how our estate looks to those people that use it, that interact with it, um, that may be our neighbors to it. And, and most importantly here, I think, you know, this is about also, it's about the climate change, it's about the environment and sustainability as a bigger picture as well. So I think that is it, Nick. I think the next slide might be a goodbye slide. So thank you, Annette, once more for allowing me the opportunity um, to come along today. And I'm looking forward to seeing how this progresses. So it's back over to Rebecca. Lovely. Thank you so much, Joe. And it's really important that, you know, we do keep in touch throughout the process and we'd love to keep you involved in, in sort of our suppliers and how they're getting on. Um, so, yeah, you've got me now. Um, I will be taking you through um, a few tips and tricks for completing your application. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. Okay, so this is our uh, Highways England Graffiti Competition webpage, and I have put a link to it um, in the chat um, at the bottom of the screen. So here you just have some more information about the, about the program, and um, I just want to divert your attention to these really critical documents. I would suggest that you give them a very good read before starting to um, complete an application. Um, the first document um, I would recommend reading is the application guidance of this one here. Um, and this is your um, graffiti competition Bible. It will tell you um, everything from um, how to frame your answers to how the funding schedule is organized, uh, things like intellectual property rights, key dates, deadlines, um, just everything you need to know. So have a scan through that first. Um, the second document is the programme specification. I won't dwell too much on this because Abraham's going to cover this in his presentation. But this document outlines specifically what um, Highways England are looking to fund um, and what projects are within their interest 
areas under both removal and prevention. Um, the third document that I would suggest reading is the funding agreement, which sets out the terms and conditions. And this is something that we would ask you to read thoroughly before you send in your application, because you'll have to tick that you, you adhere to these. Um, and also, if you were successful, um, you'd, when you um, sign your grant offer letter, you're signing essentially to say that you agree with the, the terms and conditions. So I would just read those as well. Um, if you have some time and you want to read another document, there's our privacy notice um, just pertaining to how we uh, use and keep uh, your data. So when it comes to actually uh, physically applying for the competition, um, what we would like you to do is go to this link here and complete um, the application form. And this is on Microsoft Word. Um, it's a very simple form to fill out. Um, so let's kind of go very quickly, whistle stop through the application, just so you know what to expect. Section one is all of the company information, kind of generic contact information, as well as um, a due diligence section. And the reason we ask this is that um, the Catapult and Highways have um, a responsibility to ensure that the companies that uh, we work with are um, you know, have the right policies in place, are adequately insured and are of sound um, standing. Um, not all of these questions will apply to you, so don't worry too much. Just simply select the not applicable option if that, um, that would apply to you. Um, the second section, so this is really the bulk of the application. Um, and what we're asking for specifically, there's some sort of uh, simple sort of questions around the, the summary, and this is a public uh, facing summary. So um, just to make you aware that anything you put in there, we will be using publicly. Um, the key elements of the application, um, the first one is the challenge. So we want to know that there is a challenge in the industry at the moment or a problem area that your technology is seeking to address. And it's really important in this challenge area that you refer to Highways England's Innovation and Modernisation Funds plan um, within their designated funds plan of 2020 to 2025. And we have that hyperlink in there to make things easy for you, if possible as well. Um, and it fits. Um, we would... Um, like you to refer to Highways England's customer service strategy and the strategic business plan as well, both of which are hyperlinked here. The second element, and um, this is really quite crucial element, of course, this is an innovation funding programme. So we want to know how um, your design, how your technology is innovative. What is the innovative aspect of it? And it doesn't have to be the, uh, the whole thing is innovative. It could be that um, this technology has been used in another area and for another use case, and it's been really successful, and therefore you're applying it to this use case for the first time, and that's the innovation in it. Um, the third area is around the project plan and the methodology. Um, if you could please provide us with a Gantt chart to support this, that would be fantastic. It would be really helpful to know about your project team, um, what qualifications they have and how they are suitably experienced to be able to carry out the project. Um, in here as well, um, it would be really helpful to um, know the key risks associated with your project and how you plan to manage these. Um, the fourth key area is exploitation. So while this is uh, a trial, it's a design, um, we do appreciate it could be quite early stage and we are still at the demonstrator point uh, in the development. However, we do want to know that you have aspirations and a clear route to market. So what, who, you know, have you tested the water with the industry? Do you know what your route is? Um, it's helpful to us um, that this to, to know that you know this project is um will not just sort of come to an end in November and then you're kind of oh well that was interesting let's just file that away we want you to be able to take the learnings from your technology and commercialize it and we will we as in the catapult will be here and I'm sure highways and and our other partners will be here to help you in the commercialization aspect of that journey um the fifth area uh, is the project finances. So for your £30,000 investment, we would like you to break this down for us. Um, you can 
uh, apply for um, the, the following um, uh, sort of areas within your within your project. So it will be staffing is number one, um, any consultancy costs, uh, costs for materials and equipment or laboratory testing costs, and then any other expenses that are reasonable to the project. Um, we are sort of coming out of the end fingers crossed of COVID so you might have some travel expenses in there as well um, so anything that is directly attributable, attributable to the project you can claim for um, and that's really it um, other than a final section that just talks about um, state aid declaration and terms and conditions so just to mention at this point um, that uh, Highways England is offering this £30,000 under uh, de minimis funding, um, which is, uh, is state aid. It was previously known as state aid. It's now been replaced by the no subsidy agreement. So what we would expect is that um, by accepting the, uh, the grant funding, you will not be exceeding your um, £344,000 state aid limit um, over a three year rolling period. So this is just a tick that that will not be the case. OK, so um, that's the application form. Um, I need to stop sharing my screen. The other just a few things just to touch on. Um, we do have word limits in the application form, so do try where possible to keep to those. Um, a really important point, and it's not often adhered to, um, but it would be super helpful if you possibly could write in layman's terms where possible, um, avoiding acronyms and sort of um, obscure jargon and just make it sort of pitch it this idea at a kind of commercial level. Um, so a non-specialist audience could understand it and, and digest it. Um, that would be helpful. And finally, uh, a note about the deadline. Um, applications must be submitted by midnight on Thursday, the 10th of June. Um, and if you do have any questions um, whatsoever about the application process, please do put them in the Q&A section. Um, thank you. So that's my bit of effectively done. Um, I'd now like to hand over to um, my colleague, Abraham, who's a technical team lead in our modelling team. Um, Abraham will talk us through the, the scope of the competition in more detail. Thanks, Abraham. Thank you very much, uh, Rebecca. And thank you all for connecting to this afternoon's webinar. Um, I'm Abraham Na. I'm one of the modelling team. I'm, I'm the modelling team lead at the Connected Places Catapult. Uh, what I want to share with you this afternoon is some of the work that we have done uh, prior to this competition um, in the hope that this would allow you to understand better some of the, the scope of the work that we're trying to ask you to support us with. So uh, a while ago, er early this year, Highways England invited the Connected Places Catapult to carry out a market review, a market overview review as well as a research to understand some of the technologies and products that are widely used in the market for the treatment of graffiti. And then also um, to help to identify the some of the products which can then be taken onto a trial. So in doing this, we had two main objectives. Our first objective was to try to understand the ways and solutions to prevent graffiti more effectively from appearing and reappearing on the network, and also to identify the solutions which are fast, which are cheap, which are safe, eco-friendly, and which have minimum disruptive to the network and also which are not harmful to the infrastructure itself. While doing this work, we looked at two approaches. We did a desktop study as well as a request for information. As far as the desktop study was concerned, we actually carried out um, search engines. So we did an exploratory research where we looked through, uh, through the internet um, which products were available. And then we did then a, a bit more detail into the descript descriptive study, as well as looking at some general papers and publications which were available regarding the products that are on the market. As far as the request for information was concerned, 
uh, what we did was try to prepare a general um, challenge statement regarding the problems that Highways England has on the network and to seek responses from people within industry, how they will look to tackle those challenges. This was published through a request for information on practice and government.gov um, website on the 12th of January. And then we also received some responses from that and those help us to understand what products were available on the market. Next slide, please. So in a course of the desktop study, which I said we've used exploratory research, reading journals and uh, Google searches, we identified in total 31 companies which had capability within this, um, within the removal and prevention of graffiti. We looked at uh, the capabilities of the company, the type of products which they had on offer, the level of innovation which they had within that, whether they were UK-based companies, whether the products were eco-friendly or not, try to understand the uh, level, the TRL level, that's the technology rate less level of the product, whether it was really available on the market. Um, we try to validate some of these also with Kia, who are industry experts, at least they work with Highways England currently as a contractor removing gravity on the network. And then at the back of that, we also conducted some form of interviews with the key companies that we identified. In all, we identified that there were about 31 companies through our horizon scanning. We found that um, there were about 19 anti-graffiti coating solutions, 16 paint removal solutions, five laser technology, um, five um, machinery, two anti-gravity filming, one anti-graffiti painting, and one which we call the process. And these are the companies that we found, 31 of them, as we have listed here. Now, as we went through to analyze the data that we collected from these companies, we identified and were able to shortlist five of them for um, about, no, actually about 10 of them for further interviewing and conversations around their product. And through that, we're able to shortlist only five of them as having the capability that can support highways in land. So these are ESL, Block Cell, NanoCare, Network Rail, and Dacrylite, who actually stepped in, uh, who were recommended by Rhinoceros. And then also we had um, conversations, a presentation for another company called Pristine, and we found their solution also useful uh, beneficial to highways and lands purposes. So we also added them also to the companies that could then be carried on to try. Next slide, please. And then in terms of the request for information, we published this on practice and then on .gov uh, government website, we had about 18 different companies expressing interest um, to provide some solutions to the challenge that we have published. But in the end, there were only four companies that responded. Out of the four, we were able to identify two of them, which is GAG, AGS Solution, AGS Limited, as well as uh, since infrastructure services, as having the capability that we could take on to trial. So out of the four, we then selected only two of them, had conversations where we could have with them, and eventually shortlisted eight in total that could then be carried on to trial. Next slide, please. So these companies, there are eight of them that we identified, AGS, Block Cell, System Infrastructure Service, Dacrylate, ESL, NanoCare, Network Rail, and Pristine. We are taking them through trials, which we'll be doing um, in June, um, from, uh, from the June 14 to June, 28, 29, thereabout. But what the study did show to us is that there is currently limited innovation which is going on in the industry regarding prevention and removal of um, graffiti. And as a result, most companies are really using of the shop product, established product. There isn't much innovation which is going on. So we saw this as an opportunity for Highways England to take the lead in driving innovation within this industry, uh, particularly regarding the removal of graffiti on the road network. And that is why we are here today, going down the path of the competition, hopefully um, trying to get those who have innovative solutions to see how they can help to address the problem. 
So when we talk about innovation, the type of innovation that we are expecting from you generally, what are we talking about? Um, we're looking at solutions which would not intentionally place uh, graffiti artists in danger. So you remember um, to the talk of um, Annette, you would have had safety, safety on the road network. And we're looking at being very careful that we're not pro we, any innovation that we are trying to bring about will not pose unnecessary danger to graffiti artists on the network. Secondly, we also want to be careful that those solutions also do not um, place any contractor or highway staff also in danger as far as the network is concerned. We are also, um, we also prefer solutions which um, are breathable because there are some solutions as long as they fall onto the concrete, they are not breathable. And solutions that cause dampness and those ones which cause damage to the concrete or brick structure or steel structure or what, whatever, we don't want solutions of this nature. We want solutions that are eco-friendly, solutions that um, don't pose danger to the people who, who, who use them, solutions which are not causing dampness around the network. Also, um, we know there have been a lot of talks about robotics and drones in the use of various sectors. Um, we're not disproving them, but we're just trying to say that we want solutions which as much as possible cause minimum distraction to motorists on the network. So these are some of the things that we think you need to be considering when you are offering solutions um, to address this. As far as what we have identified so far that we are taking to trials, they are mainly solvent uh, solutions, paint, anti-graffiti paint, and removal paint, and jet washes and things like that. So we're just trying to encourage you to think through solutions which are either still under development or which are uh, mature in other industries, which can then be transferred for use of this um, competition. So we are um, really happy that you have, you, you have shown up to hear about what we got on offer, and we hope that you'll be able to apply and give us some very good solutions, which can then help mitigate the problems that we have in terms of graffiti. Thank you. Next slide. I think I'm done. Nick. Lovely. Thank you so much, Abraham. Um, so I'd now like to introduce Arma from Highways England. So Arma is going to be taking us through the regulation and certification element of, uh, of this project. Thanks, Arma. Thank you, Rebecca. I appreciate it. Um, and I do, I must apologize in advance because I will be repeating some of the um, points that Annette has mentioned before, but hopefully this will um, reiterate the strategic importance of what we do, how we do it, and why we do it. So I'm Armour Essa. I'm an innovation advisor within Howes England, and I joined Howes England back in 2017. Um, so who are we and what do we do? In a nutshell, we are Howes England. Uh, we were formerly known as the Howes Agency before our switch to HE back in 2015. We're owned by the government, meaning any funding that we receive is all from the taxpayer, and we receive this in five-year periods. We often refer to this as the Roads Investment Strategies, or RIS for short. So RIS1 started in 2015 and concluded in 2020, and then we're now in the midst of RIS2. So most recently for RIS2, we were awarded a budget of £27.4 billion pounds in total um, to spend between 2020 and March 2025 um, in order to design, build, operate and maintain England's motorways and day roads. Now these are collectively referred to as the Strategic Road Network, which currently stands at 4,300 miles, but it is increasing on a daily basis. And prior to the pan pandemic, this roughly translated to about 4 million journeys every single day. Next slide, please, Nick. So how do we do it? So within our operations department in HE, we've divided the country into 14 different regions, as outlined in the diagram. And each region has an appointed managing agent contractor, or MAC for short. And it's their remit to design and deliver road maintenance operations. And as one of our MAC contractors, Kia have kindly agreed to partake in this project and provide their technical expertise, which is fantastic, as Kia do look after several areas for us. 
It's also worth mentioning that we've published a couple of document sets which govern how we design, construct, operate and maintain the network. Namely, these are the design manual for roads and bridges or the DMRB document set. And the other one being the manual of contract documents for highways works, the MCHW. And for any product to be used on our SRN, it will need some form of certification or accreditation, such as the Highways Authority's Product Approval Scheme, or HAPAS for short. Now, within RIS-1, our company was tasked with updating and modernizing the DMRB document set, which was successfully, successfully delivered by March 2020. And we are now in the midst of um, updating and modernizing the MCHW document set. And these are all publicly available and free to download. Next slide, please, Nick. So why do we do it? Uh, well, if, if the saying goes, a picture paints a thousand words, then I'd like to play this video for you, which we've produced, which should hopefully clearly explain that. At Highways England, we believe in a connected country. We believe that connecting people builds communities, that connecting families with places creates memories, that connecting workers with jobs creates opportunities, and that connecting businesses helps our nation thrive. Our network makes these connections happen, four million a day, and we make them happen safely, reliably, because we're the ones who never sleep. The ones who strive to improve our major roads and motorways. The ones who quietly design and plan, build and run. With pride, care and experience. Because our network is vital to the running of the country. We engineer the future to keep people moving today and moving better tomorrow. We've introduced Cockneys to Cornwall and Carlisle to the continent. 4,300 miles driven smarter and smoother. City to countryside, mountain to coast, wherever the people are. What connects them is England. What connects England is us. Thanks, Nick. So underpinning that video you've just seen, and as Annette has alluded to earlier, are our, our three imperatives. Safety being the first, then customer and delivery. Now for this project, we'd like you to focus on the safety aspect and the customer experience. Because I hope we can all agree that graffiti negatively affects a journey. And as such, it has been high on the Secretary of State's agenda since December, 2019. For that reason, HE are undertaking a series of activities to address this problem. And this competition is just one of those efforts. Other examples include a network-wide survey of graffiti on the network, as well as a graffiti removal trial, which um, we'll be carrying out in late June. So aside from the traditional methods of removal and prevention, and as Abraham has mentioned, we're asking you to showcase any novel ideas we could help develop further. Um, so we've got funding available for up to six innovative solutions. And if successful, your idea will be developed through a feasibility phase to establish what we'd need to have in place to take your solution to trial. Now, if we manage to secure funding for the trial, uh, we will then look to take your solution to a physical demonstration event um, later on in the year. And throughout this process, you can expect to receive support from Highways England, technical specialists. Um, so that will be coordinated through myself, as well as from Kia Highways and from the Connected Places Catapult. Next slide, please, Nick. So thank you all for your attention and for listening. I hope you enjoy the rest of the presentation. And uh, I'll hand back over to Bex for the next speaker. Lovely. Thank you so much, Alma. Um, can I introduce Tom, please? Tom Tideswell from Kia. Um, Tom is Head of Innovation and will be talking to us about uh, some of the previous successes of working with small businesses. Thank you, Tom. Hi, everybody. Uh, first of all, nice to meet you all. I'm Tom Tideswell. I'm the Head of Innovation for Kia Highways. Um, and I've come here to speak to you about um, some of the wonderful stuff we've been doing in innovation, but also what success looks like working for companies like ourselves. So Key Highways, if you could go to the next slide, please, first and foremost. Um, so Key Highways, uh, we're an £800 million business uh, who are part of the wider Kia group. And uh, we maintain up to just, just over 30,000 kilometres of network for the local authority contracts and strategic road networks um, on behalf of Highways England. 
we currently, and I can say hot off the press today, we have been awarded the Area 3 uh, maintenance response contract, um, which has been officially announced today. So we will be maintain. we currently run that area and um, as of 1st of November, our new contract over the next eight years will uh, come into play on the 1st of November 2021, which is fantastic news. We maintain, we carry out the maintenance response contracts for Area 4, Area 13, and we are currently the ASC contractor in Area 9 under the PAD arrangement. And what this means is essentially, <clears throat> excuse me, apologies for the uh, cough there, um, Kia Highways um, are the people or the contractor who will be tackling graffiti on a daily basis, removing the graffiti, but also acting as we are unique within the industry. Kia are the only company who do design and build on behalf of Highways England and the Strategic Road Network and other clients. So we do design. Um, and uh, well, so basically we do come from conception to completion of schemes from cradle to grave, so to speak. So we're the only company, um, so to speak, within Kia, uh, within the industry that do this. And to give you some backdrops some backstories of what we've done within Kia, we've trialed within this arena, we've trialed different types of paints, we've trialed uh, removal graffiti um, with paints and materials, we've tried spraying walls and when the spray paint gets sprayed on the wall or tagged, so to speak, it basically runs off like water or you can rub it off with basically a, bush, a sponge and a bucket. We've also tried innovative solutions with creating um, basically like um, a, a, a flower wall in front of the structure, so to speak, to stop um it'd be opportunity to graffiti or put graffiti on walls and what have you but as i say we're always looking to carry out new and innovative techniques and why this this is why this competition is really fascinating and to be, we are it's a privilege to be involved in because we'll be the essentially the end users will either be buying your product products or using your projects uh, products to tackle this uh prevention on stroke removal methods so just can you just go to the next page if that's okay and just to give you just some more facts and stats around Kia, I won't read all those out, um, so to speak, to you guys, but just one area in particular I would like to just um, highlight is our Nordic Science Division. And at that, it's a non-profit organisation where we um, only de deploy, employ disabled or dis um, people with class with disabilities as part of our uh, workforce. And what we do, we make all the signs for our contracts and what have you there. And it's just a really unique thing that Kia have within our uh, skill set and armory of what we deliver and what we can offer to our clients. I am also, as mentioned before, I look after the head, I look after all innovations within Kia Highway, so to speak. So we've trialed lots of smaller things. So if there's a company called Sunstone, um, Sunstone and we trial solar IP CCTV, they're a small company who are turning over just over, just over £200,000 per year. Um, so to speak. So it was really keen. It was really key to get um, Sunstone onto our supply chain, et cetera, et cetera, and go working through the challenges of working with uh, smaller SMEs on the network. And the, what what the project was was around basically solar pa solar powered CCTV, which we could drag and drop and put anywhere we need where we need um, CCTV coverage in, in 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 up to two or three hours notice. It's been really successful, and it's been rolled out between Kia Highways and in Highways England's network. And you'll see it on a lot of smart motorways as an example of where they have black spots for CCTV and they couldn't put normal cameras in. So that's just one example. We've also done a lot of an array of stuff. We're, we're working with uh, different companies in the road marking sector to uh, improve removals, imp um, so to speak, and also look at actually the performance and specifications of markings to see if we can improve the life, cycle, life, life expectancy of markings, but also the performance of markings, which, which will be concluded in the end of July. And we've worked with different companies throughout Europe um, and also had entrance into that competition um, from New Zealand, I think the furthest one away was. So that complete competition will come to conclusion in July or August of this year, um, what depend on completion of the final report. And we, like I say, um, the beauty is, is we just don't look after strategic road network, which I'm talking about here, but we look after local authority contracts such as Surrey, Suffolk, Shropshire, Birmingham City Council. So anywhere where we can trial anything like this or use these types of pension methods, that we will be really keen to understand and listen to that and take it forward. So 
hopefully that's give you a bit of a flavor about what Kia are, a couple of projects that we've worked on which have been successful so far, but what the ultimate end goal for Kia and our involvement in this project is that, we, like I say, will be the end users of these material stroke products. We also have the capabilities of factoring, uh, of influencing design and builds of contracts as part of our volume management process in our maintenance contracts. But we also work uh, on the regional development program and deliver major projects on behalf of Iowa's England. So very early on, we can use the prevention methods and materials and build them into the design and get them out there before the projects or structures or um, I don't know, VMS signs, gantries are all the already in, before they're installed. So we've actually got preventative measures already in place before and we actually get out and, or, or open the network to traffic or the road to traffic, but also that makes it from a design maintenance world, which is our other element of Kia highways, is that it makes our life much easier to, in terms of removals because we are the, the, the people who put out the traffic management, so to speak, to gain access to the network to remove the graffiti or we try and do it by often foot to reduce costs and reduce exposure to our workforce, et cetera. So anything where we can reduce the need for us to implement traffic management or put our operatives at risk to tackle graffiti um, and spend a long length of time removing the graffiti is music to our ears because they, what that'll do, it'll actually improve the customer journey on the network. It'll improve the safety for our operatives and our workforce, but it will also discourage the, uh, the scourge of how graffiti looks um, to people because do some, Certain individuals love graffiti, but the majority don't like it and think it's ugly and it's a mess. So anything where we can actively discourage that across our network and make it as pleasant as possible, um, traveling in as a user of the network, we're all for it. So hopefully if you've got any questions for me, please put them in the chat and hopefully that's give you a bit of a flavor about Kia Highways and thank you very much for listening. Tom, before you disappear. Yep. Hi. <laughs> um, there was a question. Um, the oh, it's disappeared. Oh, I see. Oh, it's been now. I think it's been answered. Sorry, and it's answered it already. But it was the it was around um, our products that make cleaning off graffiti after it occurs um, make that process more uh, easier than it currently is, and that's absolutely in scope. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, fantastic. Thank you. Um, we had a oh Annette thank you so much Annette you're really on this answering the questions um thank you for that um so Ken your question's been answered and we had so we had another one from an autonomous um, autonomous anonymous attendee I don't have a clue I'm afraid on this question um I don't know if I can bring Annette or yourself Tom have you quantified the impact uh, cost per mile or kilometer maintenance or removal costs social cost estimates it, it's a great question, one we might have to come back to for the, the actual facts and figures, and I know Tom will probably be able to, to add more in. Um, but we did recently do a survey of the whole network, motorways and A-roads, um, and there are um, sort of four or five hundred instances of graffiti um, on our network at, at, at any one time. Um, and um, Tom will be able to tell you a little bit more about the sort of costs and what's involved um, in treating those instances of graffiti. But um, ultimately, that that sort of forms part of our um, maintenance lump sum generally. So we, we generally provide a particular cost for um, that we have to try to live within in terms of the, the maintenance of the highway. Um, and so where we are absorbing that on graffiti, it means we've got you know, less to spend potentially on litter or, or, or other maintenance activities. And that's always a very, very difficult um, balance for us to take because th there's always more to do than we've really got the money for. But Tom, do you want to say something about what's involved in, uh, in yeah. terms of the cost? Yeah, so dep depending on where the location is of the graffiti and how close you are to the live carriageway, because we have to operate with a minimum of a 1.2 metre safety zone for our workforce to make sure they are safe. And also the travelling public or the road users are safe and they are nowhere near any off spray or material spray, et cetera, et cetera. So what that generally means is to get that working window or that working space is that we generally have to put a minimum of a lane one closure on, so to speak. And traditionally to, to, to tell you how much and on average to put a traffic management closure out with all the processes and procedures and road space booking, what you have to do, it costs between two and 3,000 um, pounds per shift to put that out. And then obviously our operatives and workforce have to go out and maintain and clean the network. It's slightly different if it's non-offensive graffiti, because what we'll do, we'll try and incorporate and encapsulate that as part of our lump sum activities when we're in their area to do other maintenance and cyclical maintenance. But if it's offensive or it's, it's um, 
absurd pictures. I'm trying to choose my words and language correctly here as as, as, as cleanly as I can, um, so to speak. But if they're if it's offensive gestures to anybody or any person in particular, like the prime minister or the queen or anybody like that, we have in our contract obligations to go with it to to remove that as within 24 hours. So as you can imagine, so you can imagine to arrange traffic management, get out on the network within 24 hours, get the right equipment and appropriate materials in place and target in, in place. It's quite costly, so to speak, if, you, if, if that makes sense. So for us to tackle a, a two metre wall by two metre wall, which is completely covered in paint, it probably takes us three or four hours to carry out our existing techniques and so to speak, to make sure it's in a, a safe and presentable manner to be leaving site, to leave site. So as you can imagine, if you take a net piece around that this between 400 and 500 on average uh, structures um, covered in graffiti at any one point. And if you take that, that value of traffic management that I just referenced there, so to speak, uh, it's quite a substantial amount of money which comes out of our lump sum duties, which directly impacts whether we do grass cutting, fixing potholes, so to speak, et cetera, et cetera. You name it, it comes out of the lump sum budget that is ordered each year or on year on year for each for each um, asset on the network, which we maintain to keep it as safe as possible and keep the network as flowingly, flowingly open as possible without any danger for any uh, traveling users on the network. Hmm. I think the, the, the interest, the, there's an interesting point there about social cost as well. And I think like often that can come in in, in sort of two ways. One is the, um, you know, sort of blight on people living near the network and, and the sense of, um, you know, um, motorway assets are not always like the, uh, the, the most attractive things to live next to. But, you know, that can make, be made a lot worse um, if there's graffiti there. Um, the other factor is that where, where obviously whenever we have to put on emergency traffic management to, um, you know, to deal with these things quickly, um, we're diverting traffic often off our network and onto um, local road network, which often can mean, because we often have to work at night to do this, you know, um, lorries are rumbling through people's villages and so forth on diversion routes, which is no, nobody likes that either. Great, thank you so much for answering that, um, Annette and Tom. Um, there don't seem to be any other questions on the um, on the chat. If you do have any questions and you'd like to get in touch, please do so. Nick, if you could put the final slide up, it will have the email address on it. Thank you. And um, 